Hello again, this is Tim Baldrige, and we're going to start today a series of uh, building a logic programming DSL for Clojure. This is something I've wanted for a while, um, and it's something that I keep building over and over in projects, and I figure it's kind of high time that we actually go and build it and release it as open source, and maybe do some videos about it here so that people actually understand how to use it. Now, this will be a slightly different than uh, something like CoreLogic, uh, mostly in the way that CoreLogic uses monads. We're going to use transducers. There's some differences there, um, but in the long term, I do plan on having this support uh, fully uh, open-ended unification, um, uh, as well as um, uh, the ability to specify new data sources, um, easy extensibility, um, and just a, a kind of focusing on clear interop with closure uh, itself, easy interop. Uh, the whole thing will be based on transducers, and we'll see through the system how we all actually are able to do um, kind of a lazy approach um, so that if we only want the first result of our logic program, we can get just the first result. Um, and then perhaps um, I hope to, to move on to more complex things like tabling uh, so that we kind of have memoization of the results from rules and that sort of thing. And we'll go through all of that uh, in this series. So I know this kind of um, uh, overlaps some with my other series on logic programming, uh, I mean, kind of the Mu Canron uh, type stuff, but this is kind of what I've learned in the past couple years working on this sort of thing in multiple projects. Uh, three or four projects I've, I've worked on that have used this sort of engine, um, and I, I figure it's high time we just actually make it a library, right? Okay, so to start with, um, we have uh, the name of this library is Odin. Uh, Odin was supposedly the Norse god of wisdom and all this other stuff, and we're kind of building a logic and reasoning engine. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, so to start with, we have this Elvar, right? And all of our logic engines have this. This represents a variable that may be bound or unbound. We don't know until we actually look it up in an environment. So we have LVAR. We have a, a way to construct LVARs. Uh, we have a predicate to make sure that a given variable is an LVAR. Um, and then in an environment, uh, we can go into the environment and look up the LVAR. This is all pretty standard. And then this is our standard unify function. So we can look at some examples here. So let's say we have unify and we have an empty environment. And uh, you know, let's uh, a LVAR. So we're gonna name our first LVAR A, and we say A42, does A unify with 42? Well, it does. Uh, we see here that it in fact um, added it to the environment. So it says now we know that A is 42 because we had an empty environment, and now we said, a unifies with 42, so it adds it into the environment. Now, the other thing that we can do here to kind of help us um, help this be a little bit cleaner is um, uh, we can uh, def method print method um, uh, LVAR. This is Clojure's uh, way of printing stuff, and we're going to kind of print this up so that we don't get this huge mess here whenever we print out an LVAR. Uh, and if I remember correctly, the syntax for this is our variable uh, followed by a writer um, called w, and we'll do dot write, and the first thing, uh, and we'll write uh, the string um, lvar at, and then we'll do system um, identity hash code of v, and we'll see what this does here in just a second, um, and we'll do that. And let's see, we want to import uh, Java IO writer. Okay. And, and as always, I'm using cursive here. I, it's kind of my preferred uh, editor. So we add that in there. And now when we do unify, we see that, okay, now we've, we're printing out LVAR at some ID is 42. Now, this isn't valid closure data. We can we change that in the future. I kind of like this. Um, because these LVARs don't have names and they only unify against themselves, this kind of is a hack to give us an, a unique identity for every variable. So we know that, that two LVARs are not the same. Um, so var and LVAR like this. So we can see here that, ah, they're not the same because the numbers don't match. And that allows us to kind of, in our mind, match up LVARs that way. Okay, so this is this is the, um, the normal way of doing it. So now if we say A is equal to 41, then we get nil back from our unification because we already said A is 41, and now we're saying make A 42 or, or show us an environment in which A is 42, and then we give it the source environment of A of 41, and it, and it fails. Um, uh, likewise, though, if we can say um, here that uh, A is 41, and does A equal 41, and in fact, 
Uh, wow, that that didn't that actually didn't uh, work the way I expected to expected it to here. Um, ah, and that's because in our unification we don't have we were supposed to walk these these um, variables. So then we run this. We see okay, there we go. There's our result. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to have in this language is, is open-ended unification. This is very closed unification. And especially right here, we can pair these two variables together. We are saying they have to, we have to use closures equals. And this can actually be a problem. Um, if you're working on systems where you, you may want unification to work slightly differently, maybe one of these things is a range. Um, and and they would they would match uh, in a certain environment or in a certain situation, um, but not in the context of of what we're looking at here. We just kind of want a way to extend this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to define this entire unify method using multi methods, um, and we're going to call this dash unify here, and it's a function that takes an environment A and B, and then dispatches on the type of A and the type of B. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to define def method unify. Uh, in fact, actually, let's go down here first and let's um, let's redefine. We have to actually walk these variables first, right? We have to look them up in the environment to know, you know, we may have been handed an LVAR, but in the environment it's bound to something. So you see that here, right? Is that we handed an LVAR A, but A exists in the environment. So we're going to look up A and then our unification is actually an integer and an integer. It's to say, do, do these two things match? Right. So now what we're going to do um, is defn unify an environment A and B. And we're going to, um, actually what we can do here is just uh, dash unify environment walk A and walk B. Uh, and we need the environment for those, of those, right? So we uh, have our unify function, and now we need to extend this unify here. In fact, if we run this here, we should see a, uh, here, there you go. Um, no multi-method for dispatch value long and long. Now we could go and, and implement long and long, but we're gonna do a little hack here. And uh, not really a hack, um, but we're gonna just extend for object and object. So closures multi-methods support hierarchies. Um, the, the, it is not an equals that happens in here. It's actually um, what's known as a hierarchy or an isa lookup. And uh, so we can we can leverage that and look up and say anything that's an object or an object. Our, this is our default case where we have two objects, right? And then we're going to say, excuse me, uh, we're going to say here uh, environment A and B and then we're going to say, if that is the case, um, uh, we have two objects, then what we're going to do is compare them with um, when A equals B, then we're going to return environment, right? So this is our, our default case. And if we run this, we see, all right, that, that actually works now. Now, the other thing that we have a problem with is that if we say, uh, let's see here. Oh, we, we get nil because what happened is is that LVARs are an object and they go through here and we could dispatch to object and object and an LVAR is not equal to 41, therefore we fail. Right. So uh, let's extend our LVARs. We're, we're, we need to do this portion here, the two LVAR, right? So def method unify LVAR and object. So if, if A is an LVAR, then we're just going to associate into the environment A, B, right? And the same thing the other way around. So if we get a object and an LVAR, then we're gonna do the same thing the opposite way, but this time we're gonna associate them the other way around. And there we go. So now if we go back down here, we see, ah, uh, that did actually did not work. That's interesting. Um, there we go. Uh, I don't think I evaluated all of our our methods properly. So now we, we have this new environment where the LVAR is equal to 42. And we can say, you know, 2 and 42, that does not unify. 42 and 42 unifies. And let's see what happens. A is 1 and B is 2. And we're going to unify A and B. And we need B up here, B, LVAR. That, in fact, uh, does not unify. But if we say B is 2, uh, B is 1 as well, um, uh, then we get the 
uh, environment back as we expected. Okay, so there we go. We have open-ended um, uh, unification, right? We can go in here and we could have we could have a range, for instance, and say you know this sort of thing matches uh, if um, if uh, it's one or two, right? An integer range or or, or that sort of thing. Uh, these these can even be uh, floats. Um, that that is interesting though. So I would have expected that to to work. Uh, let's see why that's uh, equals 0 0.1.0 uh, and one. Oh, that's actually interesting. I'm, I'm uh, it's probably because long. It has something to do with floating point, which I'm not going to worry about right now. Um, so anyway, it obeys the closure um, uh, equals. All righty. So that's uh, that's it for today. In the next talk, we're going to discuss. Um, we'll probably move on to implementing the basics of um, of uh, disjunction and conjunction, kind of and and or, um, and build out the rest of this all around the transducer uh, pipeline. And we're also probably going to dive into a little bit um, in this. Well, well, we'll handle conjunction and disjunction first, and then we'll talk about how um, e and eduction, eduction, I can't speak to the eduction um, in closure uh, allows us to use mapcat to kind of write um, expanding uh, rules. So where you have one environment that goes in and you get multiple environments out and we'll, we'll kind of look at how, how that's really pretty fast. Um, all right, so that's the talk for today using multi-methods to kind of um, open up the uh, unification um, uh, function in our logic engine. Thank you for watching.